Welcome to Orange Weekly presented by Krause Health. Six feet away from Nate Mink, I'm Brent Axe. Coming up, Syracuse underdogs once again, this time to Duke. Coach Babers is certainly curious who Nate's going to be picking in that matchup and what can carry over from the success against the Yellow Jackets. And Nate, that's where we start. Welcome back, by the way, to the show after the bye week. And a lot of surprise for a lot of people. Syracuse eight-point underdogs to Georgia Tech, but they win that one 37-20. What did you see in that matchup, Nate, that maybe could carry over for the Orange against Duke and maybe even beyond? Well, the big thing, Brent, that I took away is turnovers. They turned Georgia Tech over five times, and they did it without some of their best ball hawks in the secondary. Andre Sisco obviously had a pregame injury that kept him out of the Georgia Tech game. It looks like he might not be able to go this weekend against Duke, too. But, you know, they had guys step in, and whether it was Rob Hanna coming down with an interception, whether it was Jihad Carter, who's been filling in for Eric Coley in the back seven, he came down with a spectacular interception and then threw a backwards pass to Trill Williams, who what finished it off. It was, it was an unbelievable play. That defense, that 3-3-5, is generating a ton of turnovers right now. And, yes, Jeff, Jeff Sims is a true freshman quarterback. He's still green. Duke has a more veteran quarterback in Chase Bryce, but Duke's been turning the ball over a ton of times too through their early portion of the season. So if that's a trend that continues, you got to like Syracuse's chances this weekend. Ten takeaways for the Syracuse defense. That is second in the country right now. And Nate, something that really jumped out to me in that stat and has stud, uh, stood out so far for the Orange, the youth movement, particularly on defense with this team. You mentioned Jihad Carter, Steve Linton, Stephon Thompson, Garrett Williams at cornerback. A lot of young players that have been thrust into action either by injury or otherwise, and they are stepping up at this point. Can they keep that up? It's, it's not just the guys who won starting jobs like a Stephon Thompson or a Garrett Williams. It's the guys that are maybe on the two or three line that have emerged and, and played well at, at points in this season. It's Jihad Carter, it's Rob Hanna, it's Marlo Wax, another young linebacker. I really like that nucleus and I think you know, they're making plays now, you know, it's early. We'll see how they hold up throughout the course of the year, but that's a pretty solid nucleus to start thinking about the future of your defense and building around that, that middle of the defense. And can they keep it up? <laughs> you know, talk to, me on, talk to me on October 24th <laughs> when we can see if they can keep it up. But, but they got time to, to get better, and, and I think really the staff is just looking for getting better week by week, and so far I think they're doing a good job of that. One of the most important stats from that Georgia Tech game, one. That's the amount of times that Tommy DeVito was sacked against Georgia Tech, and while the offensive line did better, while Tommy did a better job getting rid of the football, I think the running game was a huge part of the success for that offense and why even Tommy DeVito didn't get sacked as much. Speaking of a youth movement, Sean Tucker busts out 112 yards, two touchdowns. It's a lot of pressure to put on the kid going forward here, Nate, but Syracuse needs a running game in order to alleviate some pressure from its quarterback. He's, he's really well built as a tailback. You know, he's, he's strong. He has a burst of speed. He was a track star down in uh, Maryland. He, he doesn't need a ton of daylight, and he's really decisive in how he hits the hole. And, you know, boy, I think Dino alluded to it after the game uh, a couple weeks ago. Uh, he chews off more than what the run is blocked for, and that's what you kind of want in your tailback. You want someone who's going to push the pile forward, so to speak. And, you know, he's doing this really without a full year in that strength and conditioning department. And that, I think, is what should excite a lot of Syracuse fans, is once he gets a full offseason or two under his belt and really starts rounding out that frame and, and the speed staff makes him quicker and the strength staff makes him stronger, you know, you're looking at a, a guy that, you know, if he stays healthy, can turn into a pretty complete back that we haven't seen here in, in a long, long time. You brought up Andre Sisco, a key injury for the Orange, certainly. But remember, Jawar Jordan had an owie, as Dino Babers put it, against Georgia Tech. He needs a little help. Sean Tucker does in that backfield from Jordan and Markenzie Pierre. So we'll see if that running game can keep it up. Well, it's time to hear from the head coach. He's certainly interested in who Nate is going to be picking in this matchup, and he's fully aware that the Orange are an underdog. Let's hear from the head coach. It's time for Syracuse Soundbites. It was good to win that game. It really was. I mean, we were, I don't know, I thought we were like two or three point underdogs or touchdowns, two or, touch, two or three touchdowns underdogs. I, I, saw the, I saw Nate picked against us, and I love it when Nate picks against us because that means we've got a chance to win. You know, it's, so you're telling me I got a chance. If Nate, I mean, we've got a chance. So, uh, you know, we haven't been favored in an entire football game this year. And, and as far as I know, it's the same this week. And you know, that's okay. We, you know, we need to get better. Everybody's telling us that we need to get better and we're working really, really hard uh, to get better as fast as we can. 
Nate, we don't want to keep Coach Babers waiting too long on who you're picking in this matchup. We'll get to that here shortly. But the Duke Blue Devils come in one and a half point favorites in this matchup. And Nate, that's more of Vegas wants your money versus who they think is the better team in this game. Right? That's right. That's right. Point spreads, Brent, as you know. I don't know how you would know this, but I trust that you I've know. I've heard a little bit about right, it. Right. Yeah. Uh, they're not necessarily a projection of, of what the final score is going to be or who's going to win or lose. It's really, you know, how can we make this point spread attractive to people who want to depart with their, their money, so to speak, and, uh, and try to build up their banks as well. So For entertainment purposes only, of course. Of course. Right? Of you course. make Syracuse a four-point favorite in this game, let's just say nobody bets on it. You make Duke a one-and-a-half-point favorite in this game, a little more money goes on it. So don't be fooled by that. But this is a Duke team that's coming off a better performance against Virginia Tech, albeit with an asterisk, Nate. Virginia Tech had 21 players out of that matchup, either due to COVID or other injuries. Two coaches were not available for that game, including their defensive coordinator. So take that with a grain of salt. But Duke did look better against the Hokies. And they've got a pretty good quarterback in Chase Bryce. Remember him, SU fans, a couple years ago when he was the quarterback at Clemson, beat Syracuse in what was a really tight game. I believe Travis Etienne had a lot to do with that 94-yard touchdown drive uh, in the final minutes to, to beat Syracuse a, a couple years back. And, uh, you know, I, I think Chase is certainly a, a guy who's been around the block, but he's not going to have T. Higgins and Justin Ross and oh, Travis no. Etienne out there with him on Saturday. He's going to have Duke's squadron of, of skill guys. And, and, you know, the big thing with Duke, really, I go back to what I said in the prior segment, they're, they're turning the ball over a ton of times, and, you know, they don't have, you know, too many explosive athletes either in the backfield or on the perimeter. Now, they have some size up front, and they have a strong tight end in, in Noah Gray, uh, and obviously on the defensive side of the ball, they have a couple of NFL, future NFL draft picks at defensive end, but, you know, Duke's, Duke's going to be like, you know, your Wake Forest, your Boston Colleges, your Virginias, your Syracuses, you know, they have to, their starters have to play really well. And they're down, they're down more than a couple starters going into this game. They've had some injuries in the secondary. Their, their corners are out indefinitely. They lost Jack Wallaball, their center again. He's the, the son of Dave Wallaball, who's a, a familiar name to some, some longtime Syracuse fans. So, you know, they're banged up just as Syracuse is banged up going into this one. Uh, but Duke, you know, again, if there's anything you can say about Cutcliffe and, and that Duke coaching staff is, is they tend to play a clean game and they, and they tend to make you beat them rather than Duke beating themselves. Fifteen turnovers for Duke so far this season. You mentioned the names, Nate. Chris Rump, Victor Dimukeji, two terrific pass rushers that Syracuse is going to have to keep off of Tommy DeVito if they're going to keep that offensive success rolling. And I think they do. I think Syracuse beats Duke in this matchup and no matter who you, you're putting your money on, I've got Syracuse winning this game 35-14. Nate, Coach Babers is waiting. What's your prediction? I am going to stick with what my gut told me in the preseason. I, I do have Syracuse winning this game. I have it a little bit of a, of a lower score than you, Brent. I, I, you know, I chalk a lot of last or a couple weeks ago to, to the defense generating five turnovers. I think that's that's a rarity in college football. You know, maybe if you get three, okay, maybe you, you subtract 10 points. I have Syracuse winning 28 to 21. Uh, I'm, a, I'm in green with you, though, on uh, being able to keep those defensive ends in check. I think it really is going to come down to the tackles, and I think Service and Matthew Bergeron can hold their own. I mean, I think Bergeron obviously is still a young guy, but, you know, the, the thing that I think Syracuse struggles with is when they have a really, really good nose tackle going up against them. We saw that certainly with in the North Carolina game and, and the Pittsburgh game. You know, I think if you can sort of hold your hat on, on maintaining those edge rushers, and again, I think with some of the injuries that Duke has in the secondary, I think there are going to be opportunities on the perimeter to throw the ball down the field, whether it's Anthony Queeley or, or Taj Harris, to be able to generate a, enough explosive plays to get the win on Saturday. 12.30 kickoff between Syracuse and Duke at the Carrier Dome on Saturday. For the record, Coach, I was the only one that picked you to beat Georgia Tech. Now everybody's on the bandwagon. That's Orange Weekly presented by Krause Health. For Nate Mink, I'm Brent Dax. We'll talk to you next time.